Resilience is often misunderstood as mental toughness to overcome failure and hardship. However, I find that resilience is more about elasticity than toughness. It is a skill that we can develop to recover quickly from difficulties and back to equilibrium. A resilient person is like a bouncy ball. When it falls into a hole, it bounces out of the hole instead of crawls inside the hole. In this video, I'm going to share how to develop resilience to micro stress. We are familiar with major stress, which refers to extreme hardship, such as divorce, illness, and death. Then what is micro stress? The book, The Micro Stress Effect, defines micro stress as frequent, brief, everyday tension in our work and life that we often don't even notice. For example, being late to a meeting because of bad traffic. According to Joel Salinas, an NYU neurologist, if we dismiss micro stress instead of address it, it adds up in the long term and reduces our normal bandwidth to pay attention and solve problems. Micro stress can also cause a ripple effect and vicious cycle. For example, if you are worried and you couldn't fall asleep, the insomnia will make you tired the next day and lower your productivity, and it will cause you even more micro stress. Let me share two ways to build resilience that helped me and can also help you. The first way is elastic action. It is to identify the stressors and their negative impact on you, then take one elastic action in your control to reduce the negative impact on you. I say elastic action because the action can strategically absorb the negative impact of micro stress and help us rebound to our normal level of happiness. Just one action is enough to help you regain a sense of control over the situation and gain the confidence that you can make it through. I used to never admit that I feel stressed, even to myself. However, Forcing myself to get used to stress doesn't work because it doesn't remove the stressors themselves. Instead, I learned to force myself to adapt my behavior to stressors from Ross Edgley, who is the first person to swim around the UK for almost 2000 miles, who demonstrates extraordinary resilience both physically and mentally. He says in his book, The Art of Resilience, is to manage the various exercise stressors so that they don't trigger the brain to stop due to complete exhaustion or pain. For example, when he was swimming in a part of the sea that's full of giant jellyfish, he started wearing a face mask to prevent the jellyfish from stinging him. The takeaway is being resilient is not about enduring the pain of jellyfish sting, but how to avoid it. He says that not all pain is bad if it alerts us to danger. How to identify your stressors and possible actions alleviate them? There's not a one-size-fits-all solution. By classifying your stressors into three common categories, the possible actions would become more obvious. The three common categories of stressors are capacity draining, emotion draining, and identity challenging stressors. For example, a capacity draining micro stress might be a surge of responsibilities at work. The impact is you lack time to complete all the tasks by the deadlines. A way to alleviate the time crunch is to ask questions earlier when I get stuck. My former manager once said that something that takes me ages to figure out might take an experienced person five minutes to answer and point me to the right direction. An emotion draining micro stress might be layoffs at one's company. The impact on you would be the anxiety over the financial implications in case one gets laid off. How to alleviate it is to update my resume so that I know I have a way out in case I lose my job. An identity challenging micro stress might be you're working in a logical job while you identify as a creative person. This might impact you in that you can't see the meaning in your work. A way to alleviate this is to engage in more creative activities outside of work. If the micro stress you're facing is completely different from the ones I listed above, then 
you may leverage your support network to find the possible elastic actions to take, which ties to my second way to build resilience. The second way to build resilience is to build a support network. Besides taking strategic actions yourself, human relationships also contribute to your resilience. Try to build a diverse set of connections in advance. More resilient people are more skilled at knowing what kind of support they need during the tough stretches of life, according to the MicroStress Effect book. From personal experience, finding a group of friends at my workplace is the most important factor that helps me become resilient to micro stress because I feel like I belong and I have something to look forward to. The question is how to build a resilient support network. There are three kinds of support that you might need from a support network. The first type of support is practical support. They could be your coworker or mentor who can help you see a path forward from their experience and offer a different perspective. For example, before I think that asking other people questions would bother them, but then my mentor told me that people feel validated if you ask them questions because they feel useful and so it's a win-win situation. The second type of support are people who help you take a break from micro stress. For example, you can build a network around shared recreational activities. I joined a singing course where I see people on a regular basis as well. Another thing that you can do is to seek self-improvement as a group. I joined a book club at work, which is how I got to know this book, The Micro Stress Effect. The third type of support is empathetic support, which means that you can share your feelings with these people. Before, I avoid sharing or mentioning my stress to others because I don't want to be a burden. However, I find that when others mention their stress, it deepens our connection because we're being vulnerable. It also creates a safe space for others to share their feelings next time. For example, in the book club at work, since we're discussing the micro stress effect book, we all shared our personal experience with micro stress. It is beneficial in two ways. First, by releasing emotions, we move to more rational responses. For example, taking actions, brainstorming solutions. Second, it calms you to know that you are not facing the adversity alone. To conclude, we can build resilience by taking strategic elastic actions and building a support network. I'm confident that with practice and time, we can get better and better at managing and removing micro stress so that our life would be easier and happier. Thank you very much for watching and please let me know if you have other tips to build resilience in the comment section. Love you, bye.